uh, as we see here, somebody have raised his right hand and uh, apparently he's pointing, that's another person, he's pointing towards the Kaaba or basically the black stone. We have to differentiate now. Uh, there is another case here where we see women jogging and we stated that women should not jog or do ramal uh, at all. Also, we see some men uncovering the right shoulder. They assume that they are still in a state of ibtiba'ah. Now, those uh, mistakes should be avoided. Uh, once a person starts his sa'i, should cover his shoulders. A woman should not jog in between the two green markers. Only men. And if a man is taking his wife, daughter, or uh, a lady with him, he may jog, then he would wait for her so that she doesn't have to run to catch up uh, with him at all. Uh, as we've seen that those who are raising their hands, uh, this is a very common practice, that a person would just raise his hand towards the Kaaba, the same practice they would do before the black stone. This is wrong. The Prophet ﷺ stood on a sofa and he made the supplications, not pointing towards the Kaaba, rather just facing the Kaaba. Um, Sheikh, once we finish with this uh, rite in Hajj, this pillar of Hajj Asa'i, where, where, does that, where does that leave us? And is there any difference at this stage in terms of which type of Hajj that you've made the intention to do? Exactly, it depends. So for instance, if a person came to perform Hajj with the intention of making Umrah and Hajj, Hajj al so now this person is ready to exit the state of Ihram simply after finishing a sa'i and reaching at al marwa in the seventh trip by shaving or trimming their hair shaving is prescribed only of course for men and it's not uh, allowed for women trimming is only for uh, women and it is also permissible for men uh, however the prophet sallallahu yes, once prayed for those who shave as saying rahim allahu muhalliqin some of the companions said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what about those who just trim? Uh, assume that a person like Musa is very keen about his hair and doesn't <laughs> want to shave. So we'd say that, uh, may Allah have mercy on you if you shave after you finish the arkan of the Umrah or the arkan of the Hajj. So once again, they repeated the question, Ya Rasulullah, what about those who only trim? He said, may Allah have mercy on those who shave. And he repeated that four times. Every time a person is performing Hajj or Umrah, and remember that the Prophet ﷺ prayed four okay. times for those who shave, would say, of course I would like to be of them, four times. In the, uh, uh, afterward, the Prophet ﷺ was asked once again, and he said, and may Allah have mercy on those who trim their hair. Uh, once you shave or trim your hair, now you're in a state of complete tahallul. You exited the state of ihram. It is lawful for you to wear your regular clothes, to wear the fragrance, to even embrace your wife and have a marital relationship with her. Because that is the purpose and the benefit of Hajj al-Tamatta. But if you're in a state of Hajj al-Qiran, you still remain in the same condition of Ihram. You do not exit Ihram, you do not uh, put on different clothes, your regular clothes, rather you keep the Ihram clothes on all the way until the Hajj is over. And that's why we definitely recommend Hajj al for those who came earlier so that they can do the Umrah in a few hours, then exit the state of Ihram and feel free to do anything without any restriction, anything that's permissible, of course, uh, until the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah when they will be ready to assume a new intention of performing Hajj. For Hajj al Qiran, do you actually perform the act of cutting or trimming, or do you wait until the end of no. Hajj? No. Why you are in a state of ihram, cutting or trimming becomes one of the restrictions of ihram. So since you will keep your ihram on, and you remain in this condition of ihram, you are not allowed to clip, cut, or shave. What about someone who is performing Hajj or Tamatta, uh, but wants to perform another Umrah, maybe within the few days that uh, he or she is staying in Mecca, is this acceptable? Well, that's another privilege that those who are performing Hajj al Tamatta they may get. The question now, whether it is permissible to perform another Umrah or more than one Umrah in between this Umrah of Hajj and the Hajj itself. Uh, the practice of the Prophet ﷺ was as follows. He came and whenever he came, he performed only Umrah one Umrah with the Hajj. 
So it is recommended to follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ and to copy his traditions. However, we cannot say that it is prohibited. Rather, it's not just recommended, especially during Hajj. Why? Because whenever you go to perform another ihram and come back, that would just increase the crowd furthermore. And it would not give a chance for those who just arrived to perform tawaf and sa'i freely. Uh, but if you still would like to go to perform Umrah, then you will have to exit from Al-Haram and go to a place, a pointed place for the people of Mecca to assume an, a new intention of Ihram, which is known as at tanim and nowadays is known as Masjid Aisha. This is actually the place where uh, the Prophet Sallallahu when Aisha came with him to perform Hajj, and she experienced her period, monthly period, she wasn't able to perform Umrah at first. She remained until she's done with the Hajj. Then she came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, everybody did Hajj and Umrah. I'm the only one who just did Hajj. Uh, I'm not going to go home with Hajj without Umrah. So the Prophet ﷺ sent Abdul Rahman, her brother, with her. You see, she needed a mahram to a Tan'im, which is a very close area, but this is an area outside the sanctuary of uh, Mecca or Al-Haram, where there she assumed an intention of performing Umrah, and she returned to Mecca, and she did all the arkan which we talked about. Then afterward, she trimmed a part of her hair, and she was now in a state of tahallul. Uh, I've heard before that, because there's a, a time later during Hajj where you also uh, uh, shave the hair, that sometimes if you're doing Umrah before that, within a few days you want to trim instead of shave, so you have something left for Hajj. Is True. this advisable? Uh, unfortunately, uh, many people uh, think it is an opportunity and they have to seize, so they do more than one Umrah in one day. <laughs> Uh, no, some of the scholars said that you have to leave a gap at least a few days, 10 days perhaps, enough to have your hair grow back if you've shaved, mm -hmm. so that you'll be able to shave it once again, uh, unless if you're planning to shave the scalp instead of the hair. <laughs> well, um, we're running out of time, but if there's um, a, a chance, we just wanted to re review one issue in particular, which has come up several times, but it's worth mentioning. The difference between the practices for men and women throughout the Hajj, what are some of the key things we need to remember in this regard? Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, concerning the Ihram, we know that men are not allowed to wear any stitched clothes during their Ihram, at all. While women wear their regular everyday clothes, men would just uh, wear the fragrance prior to assuming the intention of Ihram. Women would avoid that completely. The Ihram of a woman is in her face and hands. It is uh, not permissible for her to cover her face and hands in regular conditions. If she's sitting in her room, if she's around a uh, feminine company, only whenever she passes by men or men pass by her, in this case she may cover her face if she's one of those who are already wearing uh, the niqab. When we come to talk about at tawaf uh, men do al ramal and do al ittaba ah. Women are not allowed to jog, and of course they don't do al ittaba ah. Uh, same thing in the case of a sa'i. Jogging between the two green markers, it's only prescribed for men and it is not for women. Well, alhamdulillah, through the episode so far, we've finished an umrah uh, here together in the studio and with our viewers at home. Uh, though, of course, it ha doesn't have the same reward as actually being there, but uh, I think we've all gained a lot of knowledge and feel a lot more comfortable in terms of uh, facing this for ourselves. Unfortunately, for this episode, we're out of time. So when we come back, we'll move further on to the next rites of Hajj. Please stay with us for that. We're looking forward to having you with us again. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. <laughs>